Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we are looking at Polestar. We've got a really fascinating video and I'm really excited to do this video because obviously, as you can see, we've got the webcam up. Now today we're talking about Polestar shareholders. Who owns the most of PSNY stock? I found this to be perhaps one of the most interesting articles that I've happened to came across on Polestar. On this channel, we are huge fans of Polestar, the PSNY stock, perhaps our favorite stock. So I just want to assure you of my excitement, and I think you're actually quite excited as well, especially if you've been subscribed for a really long time. So thank you for staying subscribed and watching these videos and always leaving a like and leaving a comment. That means a lot. That really does. As usual, I have to declare that this video is obviously not financial advice. It's not meant to be taken as financial advice. It's strictly for educational purposes. So let's leave it there. But yes, we want to take a look at the Polestar shareholders, the list of shareholders. We know that this company is owned both by Geely and by Volvo. Obviously, it used to be a performance division within the Volvo company. It used to be a racing brand for Volvo. So Polestar actually has a really strong history and heritage and something they should be proud of. Nothing to be thrown away. So we're going to be reading through this article. So let's try to understand what it has to say. The Swedish electric EV company or electric manufacturer Polestar Automotive also known as PSNY for their stock, they went public on the NASDAQ exchange on the 24th of June, 2022. So Polestar merged with Gors Guggenheim, a, um, a special acquisition company. Polestar is differentiated from other electric vehicle makers in that it had already started production at the time of the stock exchange listing with 55 vehicles on the road. That's when the stock went live. That's when they became a public company with 55,000 vehicles on the road. Understand, Lucid did not do this. Rivian did not do this. So many companies did not do this because they were more focused on um, raising money instead of building vehicles. Polestar, on the other hand, Volvo, Geely, and Polestar made sure to get the Polestar vehicles on the road in the hands of customers so people can test drive them, so people can buy these vehicles and experience the company rather than just looking at a PowerPoint or just looking at videos or renders of what this vehicle could be. Now, the company launched a full-size SUV in October. That's quite recently, actually. And the 12th of October, the Polestar 3 became known to the world as a sport premium SUV. And what a beautiful work of art, work of engineering that vehicle truly is. I mean, I'm already in love with that vehicle. That vehicle will have bi-directional charging at a later date. There will be an update sent to the vehicle that will allow the vehicle to charge your home, to power your home in the case of an emergency. Now, this feature will not be available immediately when the vehicles are shipped. It'll be available at a later date. So the vehicles will come with the technology built in. It's just that you won't have immediate access to it. And I'm guessing Postal wants to work on this feature more. This feature will also be in other Volvo vehicles. So they want to make sure that this, that this feature is obviously ready for use. So now that Postal released the Postal 3 this year, we can expect the Postal 4 next year. That is a crossover coupe SUV. It will be a little bit smaller than the Postal 3 and a little less expensive as well. Now, the company stock has taken a beat in this year. That's what it says right here. And I do agree. It hasn't been the best year for Polestar stock. Before the public listing, I was already reporting this news. I was already reporting, do not expect the Polestar share to do especially well. For one, SPAC mergers are extremely rare in this year, in 2022. Last year, 2021 and 2020, SPAC mergers were everything. They were everywhere. But this year, the market has changed. The opinions of the public has shifted. This hasn't been a good year for any SPAC merger. And needless to say, it hasn't been a good year for Polestar also. But I'm not worried. And Polestar, I don't believe they are worried because they said publicly they didn't went public to just make a bunch of money or a bag of money. No, 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 no. If that was the intention, they would have gone public five years ago when they released the Polestar 1. That was not their intentions. I'm seeing this company approaching the EV market completely different from many other rivals. So I'm already taken aback. I'm already interested and I'm already paying attention. Now, PSNY stock has lost over 60% of value to date in 2022. 
the share price was trading barely over four dollars now it's truth to be told this was really good for me because i get to buy cheap share once again not financial advice but i love cheap share especially a cheap share that's off a good and great company such as polestar now a couple of months ago polestar share it was trading at a much higher price twelve dollars eleven dollars it was doing extraordinarily well the lower cap shares, they always get hit the hardest when it comes to a down market. When it comes to a crash in the market, the market isn't performing well. It would seem like the bigger company would have less an effect. But you know, all of this year, Polestar might have lost 10, 11 billion in market value. While you look at Amazon, Apple, uh, Alphabet, Tesla, sometimes they lose that same amount in one day or two days. Being a small company as Polestar, is not always a bad thing because while they lose, I don't know, 10 billion in the space of two months, there's other companies like Amazon, like Google, like Apple, like Tesla, they lose the same value in one day sometimes. Sometimes they lose a lot more than that in just one day. So consider this because it's extremely important. Now we know Postal was founded in 2017 by Swedish automotive manufacturer Volvo Cars and its parent company, Chinese automaker, Geely, they remain the largest of Polestar major shareholders. Who are the other shareholders of Polestar with the largest stakes? How much of Polestar stocks do Volvo and Geely own after the listing? How does that compare to institutional investing and insider ownership? So if you are considering investing in Polestar, it is important to understand the company's stock ownership as the biggest Polestar shareholder can move the share price if they buy or sell large volume of stock, affecting the value of the position overall, affecting the stock overall. Polestar being such a small company, just around 10 billion in market cap, the slightest investment into this stock can make a huge difference. So before we go further, what is Polestar Automotive? So Polestar Automotive is a pure play premium electric performance car company which aims to accelerate the shifts towards sustainable mobility. The company has technological and engineering synergy with Volvo and benefits from economics of scale, as Volvo has committed to using a hybrid or fully electric powertrain in all of its models. Polestar manufactures its car in China and plans to build additional factory capacity in the US. Polestar vehicles are sold in markets across Europe, North America, China, Asia Pacific, and the company plans to reach a total market of 30 different markets by 2023. And the company has a plan to launch a new EV every single year for the next two to three years, I believe. So that was this year, the Polestar 3. Next year, the Polestar 4. Year after that, we'll be getting the Polestar 5. That is a premium sports sedan. Um, and that will be fantastic because it's going to compete against the Porsche Taycan and the Tesla Model S. So what is your sentiment on PSNY? Me personally, I'm bullish. 97% of the readers of this article are pressing the bullish button. Yes, a lot of people do believe in Polestar. So who are the biggest Polestar shareholders? I know this is why you've waited all this time to hear. So Polestar Class A and Class C1 American Depository Shares, that's the ADSs, are listed on NASDAQ under the ticker symbol PSNY and PSNYW respectively. Now the company is registered 25 million Class A ADs issuable upon conversion of Class C ADs and 9 million Class 2 ADs according to a filing with the US Security and Exchange Commission. So who owns the most shares? And Nasdaq listing, Volvo Cars said that it would own 48.3% of the combined company. Institutional investors own just 1.1%. Only 1.1% is owned by institutional investors. Now, according to data from Simple Wall Street and Wall Street Zen, although data from NASDAQ show institutional holding 4.99%, retail investors own 4.1% of the company, and insiders own 0.07, according to Wall Street Zen. So that's just a quick little breakdown. So let's go back through this, ladies and gents. Volvo Cars, they own 48.3% of the combined company. Institutional investors, they own 1.1%. Institutional investors are like big companies, big investment agencies and stuff like that. Now it also says, although data from NASDAQ shows institutions holding 4.99%, retail investors own 4.1%. 
Retail investors, just everyday people who work normal jobs. They own 4.1% of the company and insiders, they own 0.07%. Now let's keep reading because there's one part that they did not mention and that's the Geely's ownership. And that's something that is crucial that needs to be understood. So an SEC filing on 23rd of June show Volvo Cars and Geely holding a combined 2 billion shares equivalent to 94.7 stake in the company. That includes 295 million Class A ADs and 1.6 billion Class B ADs held directly by Polestar Automotive Holding. Now it goes into some further information, but it's important that we cover this. Now, with each Class A share representing one vote and each Class B share representing 10 votes, it did not include 16 million Class C1 preferred ADs and 9 million Class C2 ADs. Polestar Automotive directly owns 91.8%, the filing shows, with Geely Holding Group owning 61.2 million shares for a separate 2.9% stake. Volvo has retained ownership of Polestar through several iterations. Now, the thing to understand is that Polestar was originally founded in 1996 by Volvo Cars. Geely acquired Volvo in 2010. Volvo acquired Polestar Performance Division in 2015 to focus on improving its own performance division. The racing division continued to operate as a separate business under the name Cyan Racing. So out there in the real world, there is a Polestar racing team. It's just that it's been renamed to Cyan Racing. But technically the employees are majority still Polestar employees and the company is still technically Polestar. It's just that the name has changed. Why is the name changed? Because they wanted to use the name for a fully electric vehicle company now known as Polestar. And I'm guessing they didn't want Polestar to be associated with anything separate for now, at least for the foreseeable future. If they want to get back into racing, I can see many possibilities, even Formula E. For one, they have a competitor in that space and that competitor is Neo. And Neo is a racing company as well, not just an electric car company, but also a racing company. And it's a great way for them to promote their brand. But let's get to the part that I want to understand. How much fully does Geely own? Understand something, even though Volvo owns about 48%, because Geely owns Volvo, they own a large percent, the major percentage in Volvo, technically, half of what Volvo owns belongs to Geely. So keep that in mind as we go forward. Now, Polestar Stock Exchange listing has enabled Geely to raise financing from Polestar shareholders for its expansion outside of China. It had also reportedly considered an initial public offering of Volvo in Sweden as an alternative to Polestar SPAC merger. After the listing, affiliates of Geely chairman Eric Lee holds around 39% of the company's stock, according to an SEC filing. So that's an interesting wording because it says affiliates of Geely. Chairman Eric Lee holds around 39% of the company's stock. That's, that's fascinating to me. It does say after the listing, affiliates of Geely chairman Eric Lee holds around 39% of the company's stock. I'm reading it again because I want to understand. I did not expect this, you see. So perhaps you out there, you can help me to understand more. AMF invested 400 million euros into Polestar when it listed on NASDAQ. When it listed, when the price was relatively high, around $10, perhaps even $11. The problem there is that AMF, the 400 million that they invested, it is now half that amount. They still hold that same investment, but the value is significantly lower. Which begs the question, did they invest too early? Because if they waited until now, they invested that 400 million right now, they would hold twice as much shares. Yes, let's not forget that with each class A share representing one vote, each class B share represents 10. Those class B shares are the PSNYW, the PSNY warrants. Those majority own, I'm guessing, by Geely and by Volvo because they want to keep control of the majority of votes within their companies. That's why sometimes company have two different shares, two different shares class, because one share class will hold much more value and much more votes. I look at this similar to the Mark Zuckerberg situation that he has with Meta. He does not own the majority of shares in the company. I believe it's split up amongst many different companies. However, he does hold majority of the voting power. 
I mean, it's ridiculous. What is it? Over 80 to 90 percent of voting power he holds in that company. Just one individual. So theoretically, he can't be fired. That is magnificent. Now, how is this possible? Well, because at the time, Facebook was the kind of company that people were so desperate to invest in, they didn't care about the votes that they receive. They were willing to invest as much money as possible with as little vote. So Zuckerberg, because he had so much investment coming in, so much options, he could choose the options that wanted less votes, less voting power. The high demand of people wanting to invest in Facebook benefited Mark Zuckerberg because he held his he held his power because so many people were so desperate to invest in his company. That's the magic of business sometimes. It really is. Now this article does go on. This is a really fascinating article. It's pretty long. BNP Parisbus Asset Management, French investment firm BNP Parisbus they bought about 3.4 million Polestar shares when it went public. Based on its quarterly SEC filing, equivalent to a 0.16 stake in the company. That has made it the second largest institution amongst PSNY shareholders. At the same time, BNP sold 87.58% of its stake in Chinese EV maker NEO. It sounds like they sold out of NEO simply because they wanted to invest in Polestar. I don't see that as a necessarily bad thing. Absolutely not. If that's the right decision to make, NEO is still a brilliant company. I wouldn't bet against NEO anytime soon. But it gets even more interesting. In July, Polestar signed a deal with BNP Barispas to provide financial service to Polestar dealers and customers until December 2024. So it was more than what it seems. It was strategic, you see. Sabre Capital Management, they held 3.2 million Polestar shares at the end of June. According to its quarterly SEC filing, that made up the company's third largest institutional shareholder with a stake of 0.115%. The biggest inside shareholders are members of management team. Shareholder Haken Samuelson owns 774.400 thousand shares for a 0.037 stake in the company, according to Simple Wall Street. The CEO Thomas Ingleth, who was previously seen a vice president of design at Volvo Cars, holds 310,000 shares for a 0.015 stake in the company. Very interesting. Thomas Ingleth, ladies and gents, he owns quarter of a million, over quarter of a million shares of Polestar. And as he continues to do his job, I'm guessing his contract has some really great shares incentives. What a fantastic time to be a CEO of Polestar. It must be quite fantastic, to be honest. So that is it. We've been recording for, th for half an hour. For 30 minutes, we've been talking about Polestar shares. I absolutely love this company and I didn't feel bored at all. It was fantastic. So thank you for watching. Subscribe to see more. And of course, I'll see you in our next video. Leave a comment and let me know which part of this surprised you the most. And was this video too long? But then again, this video is only for the enthusiasts, you know, the ones who really want to wait a long time to get the information. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.